Hello friends, today I'm painting an easy misty watercolor landscape using a loose technique. For more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel. I take my big synthetic mop brush and start painting the distant mountains with a very pale indica color, almost a tea consistency. A lot of water and a little bit of pigment. They should be really pale, since they are the most distant from us. Now I want to make my mountains less wet to continue, so I'm using my small hair dryer to dry the paper. I could have just waited a couple of minutes, but I wanted to dry faster. I'm adding a little bit of dollar green to my mixture and a lot of indigo. My mixture should be more contrasting compared to the first one. I'm checking the paper to ensure it's dry enough to continue. Otherwise, the paints will bleed on the paper instead of creating a beautiful edge of a mountain. It seems dry enough to proceed. I'm painting a chain of mountains that are closer to us. They should be darker and sharper due to aerial perspective where objects appear lighter and fuzzier the farther away they are. This effect happens because the air between us and the object scatters light, making faraway things less distinct. So the farther away, the lighter and fuzzier they seem, and the closer, the darker and sharper they appear. I leave some empty spots to show the areas with snow on the mountains. I want to depict mist at the foot of the mountains to create a misty atmosphere. To do this, I run a clean dump brush along the lower parts of the mountains, blurring the pigment. I dry the paper again to ensure the pigment doesn't spread uncontrollably while I work on another part of the painting. Moving on to painting the water, I mix a pale mixture of a lot of water and dig and a little bit of phthalo green. It's important to mix plenty of this mixture beforehand to avoid interruptions during painting. I'm starting the wash. My brush absorbs a lot of this pigment. It's crucial for the brush to absorb plenty of the mixture immediately. Synthetic brushes with squirrel hair imitation, for example, are suitable for this. I soften the upper edge of the wash with a brush dipped in clean water to create the feeling of a misty scene. I take my elastic synthetic brush, Escoda, which is very nice for details. I apply indigo to the edge of the mountain to make it more contrasting. This will add depth to the painting and visually push the distant mountains further away from us. I mix a dark mixture of indigo and a little bit of phthalo green, and I start drawing the areas with land. It's essential to ensure the paper is already dry, otherwise the pigment will spread on the wet paper. With the same mixture, I start drawing pines. With careless movements of the brush, I paint the branches from top to bottom, varying 
the saturation of the pigment from lighter to darker. I apply more of dollar green in some areas. Add in some details. Moving on to drawing reflections, I check if the paper is dry enough. The paper shouldn't be completely dry, otherwise the reflections will be too sharp, but not too wet either. First, I draw the reflection spot from the land, and then I draw a more detailed reflection from the pine trees. I add dark indigo spots here and there. I add some shadows using saturated indigo on the pine trees. I'm starting now to paint a distant mass of trees. Since they are farther from us, they should look fainter and less detailed compared to nearby ones. In the mixture I use more of tallow green. I take my very small brush and paint the tops of the trees and some branches here and there. I 
I add a digger at the base of the tree moss. I use the same mixture to paint reflections. I add some ripples to the first reflection. In some places I use my fingertip to slightly blur the pigment and create an interesting texture. I want to paint a few more trees in the foreground. I take a saturated mixture of indigo and uh, paint pine trees, starting from the top. I increase the size of the branches downwards. I paint reflections with a pale watery mixture. I add shadows using indigo. some details. I'm lifting out the pigment with the brush to create light areas on the trees. I paint ripples on the water, drawing narrow dark stripes. Now I'm trying to remove the tape. I like using this particular type of tape for documents. It holds the paper well and doesn't damage it when removed. And the misty landscape is ready now. I hope you enjoyed the painting process. If you were painting alone with me, you are very welcome to post your artworks in my secret Facebook group for my patrons. The link to my Patreon page is in the description box. Thank you for watching and subscribing. Happy painting!